Ang ito ay rated SPG. Striktong patnubay at gabay ng magulang ang kailangan. Maaaring may maseselang tema, lengguahe, karahasan, sexual, horror o droga na hindi angkop sa mga bata. Ten scary stories have truly fucked me up. Folks, I fully chose the wrong time to move into my first solo apartment. So this is the sa uh, opening story. Now let's go to the story. The poltergeist saved by cages omitted by a email. When I was 16 in the mid 1990s, I ran away from a crappy living situation at home and spent week long excursions at my older teenage friend's place. One of these hobby wise and others was my friend's J apartment, located at very top of a mostly empty five story complex in an absolutely terrifying high crime part of the city. The entire building except the very bottom floor was vacant except for Jay. It was particularly isolating sense of freedom being there, as well as extra creepy. Upon Jay's moving and sent to dump, we noticed something remarkable right away. <coughs> this place was undeniably and very obviously haunted. This was made known the very moment I cleared the threshold on moving day, carrying a heavy box of Jay's book, a large warm hand ran straight up the back of my bare tight right thigh. I was wearing a tiny skirt even though it was autumn because teenager. And the sensation of the hand running up the back of my upper thigh turned to a pinch of my butt cheek. It was frozen of course and could only think to fretfully call out to Jay who was in the bedroom inflating a $10 air mattress. Mm, Jay, did you just punch my butt? He stuck in his head out of the room and looked at me like up and sin and responded, Oh, no. I told him what had just happened and instead of scared, he seemed amused because it was a silly situation to describe. After this incident, though there was no end the word sheet that routinely compromised an average day in his tiny one bedroom, set something down, it would disappear immediately. Walk into a room, the door would slam behind you only to immediately re reopen itself, ready to force you to sleep through the confusion and only slightly amusing terror. Hear the sounds of dishes and cupboards being banged around in the kitchen. One night, Jay's boyfriend stayed over, and the guy woke up in the next morning with a stinging red bite mark on his wrist. The teeth marks didn't match his or Jay's or mine, and we had been the only three there. So it was absolutely no surprise when Jay's house keys went missing. We tore the place apart looking for them. To no avail, it was Christmas Eve, so getting in touch with the apartment office to get a replacement key was not possible. Jay's mom, in the meantime, had invited the two of us over a dinner that night, so we made the decision just to leave the door unlocked this one. So we could go, we won't be gone long. We, we drank on and headed out bundle up for the will to Jay's mom's house. We ended up leaving a bit later than expected, about 11 p.m., but the streets were totally isolated by this point due to the holiday and freezing weather. This made it particularly noticeable when we realized we were being followed home. The man behind us was making no effort to disclose his action. He came out and absolutely nowhere and stayed behind us, keeping a pace of only about 9 to 10 feet. I looked over at Jace and this was the first time I had ever in my life seen him scared. The man behind us was easily 6 feet, 6 5 foot, 300 pounds of fat and muscle. If you've ever seen professional NFL player in real life, he was that size. His black eyes were laser focused on us. A couple of scrawny teenagers in a trip store, polyester bell bottoms. We were clearly poor, so he must have wanted. I don't know, something else from us, which gave this whole scenario an even darker turn. We increase our pace, he increased his pace, we turn a corner, he turn a corner. Unfortunately, every shop or business front we passed was closed, and cell phones were still brick size novelties used only by Miami Vice villains or dickheads in convertibles. There was no, there was literally no one else around except the three of us, lit only by passing Christmas lights. We finally approached the apartment stairs. We are terrified to go up and announce we were leave to this freak, but we didn't know what else to do but to get inside, lock the door, and maybe call cops if we had to. 
We ascend to the first stair landing. He follows. Second floor, third floor. Jay and I are sharing looks of panic as we try to remain calm as he clubs slowly right behind us. Fourth floor. There he is, close enough to reach out and grab us. We get to the apartment door. The man has stopped and is now just staring at us intently from the landing, waiting as Jay and I stare helplessly at each other for what seems like an eternity. I discreetly reach to open the door and it is locked. Dead bolted from the inside. I started to sweat and almost scream. When Jay decided to knock on the door, I began knocking too, and said as casually cheerfully as I could to the door, Hey, it's us, open up. The dead bolt click. The man seeing that there was someone unseen inside the apartment, turns around on the landing and walks away. We run inside and slam and lock the door behind us. Pretty sure we push the couch in front of the door as well. We holler out thank you to the ghost and laugh nervously at our sudden relief of fear, though it's still too shaken up to talk about what just happened and if of it. The next morning, Jay's house keys were mysteriously returned to the bare counter by the door, where he'd always kept them. It did not occur to me until later that the, the keys had been missing. This gigantic night stalker would have known that we were there all alone. Number 2 the Haunted Staircase by Kazari. Back in 2003 or so, I took a trip to Southeast Asia with my then boyfriend, now husband. We'd been together for only one year to two at this point, and this was the first time I was going to meet the extended family as well as visiting the country, so it was quite a big deal. We flew to a city in the central region where his paternal godmother lived. The hub seems unusually nervous on the airplane which was odd as he's not as usually an anxious person. After we arrived and took a taxi for un for the hour, long drive into the city, he turned to me and warned me very seriously to not to freak out, but his grandmother's house was haunted. I'm a huge fan of horror stories and cinemas so I was like cool. He obviously did not agree but he didn't want to talk about it further. So he only mentioned that this ghost or ghost seemed to have it out of him when he was a child growing up in his grandmother's house. His grandmother's house, it turned out, was an ancient part of the city. Residential construction in these urban regions tends to be concrete shoebox type deals stuck on top of each other. Her house is located right next to the river which floods regularly every year during the monsoon season. So her house was oppressively dark, with cracked concrete floors and discolored flood, flood marks high on every wall of the first floor. It was creepy house even for an unbeliever like me. There was a staircase in the back of the house that split off in opposite directions. One went upstairs to the spare bedroom that overlooked the roof and other to a room housing a very large Buddhist shrine as grandma was a very devout moon. According to the hubs, when he was a child, he'd seen a bright orb flash from the shrine, room down to the stairs, and up to the steps to the bedroom. He also recalled being terrified as a very young child by this he couldn't articulate. His relatives told us stories of him sometimes rushing out of himself screaming in terror at something that had frightened him badly. Other relatives told me of seeing figures walking around the house or hearing footsteps and voices when they were there by themselves. We stayed in the spare bedroom which was through a set up set up steep concrete steps almost like a loft the room overlooked the roofs of neighboring houses and would been quite comfortable except i got very ill almost immediate with a food poisoning and a whole bunch of tmi things and started spending a lot of time up there by myself the first day i was reading a book upstairs i heard my name called very clearly but it sounded far away like someone was calling from the downstairs I went down and found the house completely empty. Everyone had gone out. I brushed it up as it was very quiet inside the house. It could very well have been just my imagination. Later, it occurred to me that the silence was odd of itself. Usually, the city is noisy with pedestrians and honking motorbikes going by outside. 
but at that time, since I was nosted and it was hot and very humid, I just wanted to sleep and was happy for the quiet. A while later, I was laying there on the bed facing the staircase when I heard footsteps heading up to the room. They were very loud, unmistakable hard stamps on every step. I looked up thinking maybe my husband had returned, waiting for him to appear at the top of the steps, but the footsteps just stopped just below the top of the stairs. I heard breathing and felt someone there. Was the person just pausing on the steps? What were they even waiting for? I called out, and when I got no response, I went over to see who it was. The skirt case was empty. I went up downstairs. The house was still deserted. The voices, footsteps, and breathing occurred several more times during the three days we were stayed there. While I was alone in the room, it got to the point where I just concentrate on my book and refused to look up or acknowledge the sounds or presence in any way. I figured people had been living with the spirits of our decades and it hadn't harmed anyone that knew of right. I didn't tell my husband at the time since I didn't want to frighten him more than he already was and still wasn't sure if it wasn't just imagining it. Later, I woke up in the middle of the night. My husband was already awake the next to me. The room was unusually dark. Usually street lights could be seen through the windows and it was a moonlight night. The staircase was suffocatingly dark. There was the feeling of a heavy brooding presence at the end of the bed which was closest to the staircase, watching us. We forced ourselves to go back to sleep because what the hell else we're supposed to do about a creepster ghost watching us? LOL! The next day, since he'd experienced it too, I told my husband our about the weird sounds and voices I kept hearing coming from the staircase. Needless to say, he freaked the fuck out and told me that years ago, when his mother had been pregnant with him, she'd been going down those steps and when two invisible hands had shoved her down the stairwells. The next night, we were awoke by a loud scratching at the window next to our bed, like three branches scrapping against something, except there was no breeze. And this was a rooftop so there were no plants, much less trees, branches to scrap anything. I look outside. I know, I know, in a movie I'd be the first to die. And saw nothing. We went back to bed and we'd only laid down for about 15 minutes talking about the house when a cat started yowling outside the window like something out of the garage. We nearly had our heart attacks. I shot up to look outside the window again. There was no cat. No noises, nothing around. We weren't overlooking at an alley or anything. This was the rooftop of a three-story house there was starting to be seen anywhere. I will to chalk up the last to chalk up the last to an actual live cat hole because the cats are assholes. The next morning things seems to be happening. My father in law was bustling around the living room with a bunch of men measuring things on the floor and pointing at things. My husband got really nervous again and hustled me out of the door to do some delayed sight, seeing and wouldn't answer me any questions about what they were doing. Much later in the later day, he told me that his father, a feng shui practitioner, had been losing money in some ventures and thought his misfortune originated in the house, so he brought in a protection practitioners to diagnose the problem. They found two bodies under they found two bodies buried under the floor. By the time we got back to the house, the bodies had been removed and disposed of properly with funeral rites to appease the ghost. The bodies outdated the house. Centuries ago, when the city was still being built, but the river still overflowed its bank annually. These two were laborers who died in a flood and had been buried there, next to the river. My memory of what exactly the reason was or how the practitioner even knew the manner of their death is spotty. As my husband, husband to this day, I refuse to talk about it. I'm not supposed to have these photos. I'm told possessing even photos can bring bad luck. We never stayed in that house again. Number 3. The Evil Vacant Apartment by Helene Over the last 10 years or so, 
I have experienced multiple sightings and paranormal stuff in the apartment where I am currently. If I find the time, maybe I will write down the link for the Jezebel this year as well. In the meantime, here is the worst thing that has ever happened to me. I call this one the Evil Bakat Apartment. 20 years ago, I started having on a regular basis an awful recurring nightmare. In this one, I will be living in a perfect house or apartment in every way, with one exception. There was a section like another identical vacant apartment that connected with this place and was locked up by several blocks and padlocks. In those dreams, I could feel an evil vibrating through sometimes. I would see the door move and wave by itself. These nightmares worried me deeply. I blame it on the stress I was under at the time since I was finishing at a university program that required me to move every four months between Sherbrooke and Montreal for two and a half years. I was looking forward to having a stable home again where I couldn't definitely settle down. As a fan of psychology, I tried to play shrink on myself with the hope to understand the meaning of this nightmare that came back for more and more often to disturb my sleep. A few days before the incident I am about to describe, I had slightly different versions of the nightmare. In it, the two twin parts, the good and the evil, other, and had used an indoor staircase to go from one another. At a point, as I walked down the stairs, I saw a door, and a true window there was a man who was chopping vegetables on the counter of his kitchen. I told his new version to my friends while making fun, of, fun about the silly stuff of my imagination could produce. Two friends from my university program in Sherbrooke, we had planned to celebrate the having a scholarship by having meal in a beautiful and very glamorous restaurant since Corinne's boyfriend could welcome all of us overnight. A few days after this version of the nightmare, with a staircase, Nadia and her boyfriend picked me up for our planned evening. We had booked in a restaurant which no longer exists. Arrived at the house of Corinne's boyfriend who was living on the third floor of a triplex. I asked her where she was planning to go to make a sleep because I did not see any free rooms. She said, there are two free rooms in the basement. It is furnished but it is empty. Come, follow me with your bags. After going equivalent of a floor, I saw a window that overlooked the tenant on the first floor chopping vegetables in his kitchen. I understood at the moment with what trap I had thrown myself. Corinne opened the door for a basement apartment. I could feel evil waves enveloping me like a breath. I cannot describe it otherwise, but it almost felt to me as if the apartment was bathed in a kind of weird and very low red vibration. Many people have asked me since why I did not leave at that moment. First, I was a flat broke and also I did not want to look stupid in front of these two friends. I encouraged myself thinking that I would not be alone in the basement since Nadia and her boyfriend will be in the next room. Needless to say, I had zero fun that evening. I felt awful and yet the worst was still to come and I knew it. Just the idea of going back to the apartment made me feel nauseous. I was doing everything to delay the moment despite my lack of appetite. I ordered more than a one overpriced copy and a tasteless dessert to stay longer in the restaurant. Then came the moment we, I mean they all decided to go. I had no more recourse on the way back. I tried to see some positive. The dream was only a coincidence. All basement apartments are equally gloomy. Then in the middle of the night, a vigorous push on my arm woke me up. At the same time, I heard very close to my ear a weird tearing sound like nylon clothing being torn apart. I read not long ago that some paranormal investigators associate that sound with a demonic entity entering our dimension just the thought it makes me shiver. I was laying there in the darkest night, alone in this horrible room, wondering what had attacked me in the dark. The room didn't have any lamp next to the bed, and I was unable to leave the bed to reach the light switch on the wall. I do not think my heart ever beat so hard. I was paralyzed. I was thinking to myself, this is not happening. That can't be true. We were these nightmares intended to warn me us all that time. What should I do? Corinne was leaving too for Shinger, and the doors were probably lit up. I was not. I was uh, certainly not going to wake up Nadia in her bobbin in the next room. 
My head was spinning at a thousand miles an hour. I was trying to find an explanation for everything I did. A pretty good job convincing myself that it I felt vigorously on a, my arm was nothing more than a big sewers. And since I slept with a bad quality nylon quill, the noise was probably just a slip of a fabric. As I was delighted to have found an explanation for everything, the same stuff happened again. The thrust on the shoulder and the tearing sound next to my ear. I think I lost consciousness at that point. Well, that's what I believe, because I woke up later at night sight of the first pale light of dawn. As soon as I could not see the end of my nose, I grabbed all my stuff, climbed the stairs two steps at a time. The thirst was actually unlocked and sat down in the Korean kitchen at 5.30 a.m. She woke up some three hours later. I told her that I just arrived and have a good night's sleep. On the way back, I told the story of Nadia and her boyfriend who had a very bad night and felt scared to death. Even though nothing actually happened to them, we decided never to tell Corinne about it. When I arrived her place, I was very disappointed not to find her. As it happened before the lane of cell phones, I could not reach her anywhere and resigned myself to sleep alone in the apartment. As the night was falling, I sat down on my bed and started listening to the evening news try to reassure myself with the voice of my favorite speaker. At that moment, I started to hear weird scratches in the wall just behind me. Not paranormal shit again. The scratches kept going me. Just behind my back. As, as I was again paralyzed with fear. Just as I could not take more, the front door and Susie was shouting out my name aloud with a frightening look at her face. We jumped in each other's arms. She told me that she was initially planning to sleep at her boyfriend's cabin. But during the evening, she felt that I needed her and she need had to go back to her apartment ASAP. She pulled from a drawer two blessed medals that I belonged to her late mom, and we slept with them for days. But all of the time I lived at her place, I have never heard anything like that, not before, after even I described a mom. This was my scary story today. I told it to my friend as I was mentioning my intention to submit it to Jezebel. Holy cow, I have never thought about that. Now I am gain freak again. Witch Battle by Spooky Kara Okay, this might get lost in the abyss. Let me preface this story with a level of belief in the paranormal. I want to believe, but I have to rule out all the logical explanations. Most of the time when people experience paranormal, there is a logical explanation for it. I have experienced a number of things that I cannot explain, but I'm open to scientific explanations for it. I experienced a malevolent ghost or it was a demonic, but it certainly wasn't anything could easily explain away. When I was almost 24, I moved into my first apartment after spring semester living in a dorm as a non-traditional student. I had originally plans to live with three friends, but one decided to live with her boyfriend. Another was at a temperamental and was mad at me for some reasons. And the third I hadn't actually met because he was living abroad in Germany. Because I didn't want to get stuck living in a dorm again, I pre-applied for an apartment and signed the lease. Sight unseen, I didn't have a courtesy showing afterwards. The property management employee met me in the building, but really had no clue what he was doing. He was clearly a maintenance guy who had been asked to show the apartment because they, he was in the area. They did not have their usual stop to me, show me. The apartment was upstairs, so creep up the rickery stairs to the second floor and noted right away that everything was covered in a thick layer of dust. As if it had been abandoned for months, it had a simple layout bathroom at the top of the stairs, bedroom, kitchen. This attic was the size of an entire apartment and I was talk about having extra space. The door had a latch that you could put a padlock on. The maintenance man opened the door to the attic and tried to flip the switch but we quickly discovered that the utilities had been shut off, which the office later told me. It was a bright and sunny day, so we hadn't needed to turn on the lights until this point, and decided that enough light was flittering into attic to check out. 
at top of the stairs there is a spray painted on the wall blood ben blood i think it was creepy but it figured i could just put a poster over it anyway the maintenance guy responded with it how the previous tenants smoked the building which i could clearly smell that there was no smoking policy in their apartments i told him that was fine i don't smoke after that maintenance guy showed me out and i got the keys to the apartment the next day from the office I really took the ownership over my first place and started finally be on my own after what had felt like a failure to launch for my first five or so years of adulthood. Before I moved my things in and scrubbed the place then I hung my Harry Potter posters over the blood pen in the attic and collected all the pennies everywhere. As I was washing the windows, I found a necklace hanging from the front windows. It was an eye of Horus. I decided to google the significance and learned it was a symbol of protection and good health. <coughs> I don't know if it like the meaning of it, it, was, it just was too creepy out to take it down, but I really felt like I needed to leave it there. I made my way through the entire apartment on my cleaning spree. I found a wallet in a drawer in a kitchen. The coin purse part was filled with copper pennies and I realized that all of the pennies I have found were their copper. They were not the newer shinier ones. Mm. I realized the pennies were in two places, the center of each room and in the corners of the rooms. I googled this and discovered that ones in the center of the rooms were for good luck, and ones for the corners were used to protect from ghosts and spirits. I kept looking the wallet and found the card slots filled with business cards for a neighbor county's victims' witnesses' office, several psychologists, a defense attorney, child protective services, things that lead me to believe that the person who lived in my apartment before had experienced some violence, child custody issues, and probably mental health issues. Well, that really explained that needed protection. I shrugged it off and put the wallet back in the drawer. That night, I moved everything I had locally from the dorm to my apartment. Knowing my furniture would be brought by my family from uh, three hours away from the weekend. I lay down in my apartment for the first night sleeping on a mattress pad from my dorm. Watching the office on my phone, I was exhausted after doing so much work on my own and happy to cozy in for the night. That when I heard it, footsteps walking through the attic above me. I froze. I could hear blood rushing to my ears as panic cursed me. I could hear my heart pounding usually loud as quickly scanned my brain for a logical explanation. I landed on one quickly. The man who lives in the part other upstairs apartment had finished a take that serves as a bedroom. I remember this from the online listing which shows pictures from the old apartments. In a fourplex, he must be walking around the bedroom and sounds must be just carrying across the empty wood floor. Attic since there is nothing to absorb the sound in my hand. It was good enough to answer to me that night. I rolled into side of felt asleep in my sounds of Jim and Michael Scott.